Hello and welcome to our loyal followers on the Global Post. This is a wonderful opportunity for me to introduce you to some of the incredible team members that we have here on our platform. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. I'm the president, founder, and chief listening officer here at USA Global TV and Radio. We started our channel back on January 10th of this year, 2022, and we've made some incredible incredible growth and improvements, changes, additions, and it's all because of the people we have on our team, currently 39 people, and because of you. So thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for your interest, and thank you for our contributions. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the panelists, the team of men who are the heart and the soul of our show, Wild at Heart, Bonfire Talks, Real Authentic uncut. This show was the brainchild of Mr. Roland Friedel. And Roland actually was a guest on one of our other shows, Life's Amazing Journey. And I met him, I just felt a connection with him right away. And he's brought so much value to this platform. And as a result of that connection, he's brought together some incredible individuals, some men from around the world who are making a difference in lives of people every single day. Let's bring out the team and let's get to meet them and understand about this show, a show for men, by men, about men. Come on out. Hi, gentlemen. Good evening, afternoon. Hello, Good Hello Dr. Hey, Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Thank you for Thank inviting you. us. Exactly. My right pleasure. Much. I am really looking forward to our loyal readers of the Global Post getting to know more about you and about the show and about why it's important for men to be able to communicate and support one another. So I'm just going to ask you to go around. I'll start with Roland. Tell us a little bit about who you are and why you feel it's so important for men to support men. Yeah, my name is Roland. Um, I'm raised and born in a small little country in the middle of Europe in Austria. And I see myself as a, as a world traveler. I always travel around the world for business and for leisure um, to get to know other cultures, other languages, other habits. Uh, I, I love to connect with other people, even when I sometimes don't talk much. <laughs> but I love to connect. And I dedicated my life, actually, the last 20, more than 25 years to advocate in supporting our other people in their lives. I started as, as a trainer consultant for huge international companies that what I still do with partner performance systems. I run a coaching company where I support people about my age, 40 plus, I'm 50 plus, 40 plus, uh, who, who want to have a, a similar lifestyle like myself. I call it Wireless Life Rocks because I work and travel in different places. I always say the world is my office, the world is my home. That's what I do. And I started a little bit more than two years ago bringing up a man's platform. And this brings me to your question, Dr. Jacqueline. I dedicated a part of my life to work with men. I'm, why? Because I'm a man, I'm a human being, I'm a man, I'm a father. Of we, I'm a grandfather and a lover. And uh, why is this so important is because men need men to talk. And we know from, from, from scientific research that more than 85% of men don't have a best friend, meaning a, another male person to, to, where they really can open up their heart and talk about their real stuff, you know, about their self-doubts, their anxieties, their hopes, their fears, whatever. Not just having fun and having a beer or whatever, so then talking about real stuff. Most men don't have a best friend. And that's why I started this platform. And in, in a very interesting conversation with you, Dr. Jacqueline, uh, we created the idea of bringing this on USA Global TV and uh, radio this fantastic show and I'm very happy that I'm surrounding this amazing gentleman. Thank you very much, Roland. I appreciate that. And uh, it, it is incredible, this concept that you came up with and you were able to get this fabulous team of men engaged. And what was that experience like? And then we'll go over to Ezra. What was it like when you reached out to each of these guys? Were they, hey, yeah, let me let me come aboard. Or were they like, hmm, I'm not really sure. I, I need some facts and figures. I need to think about it. <laughs> Well, actually, uh, it was different, but I, I remember Marcin, uh, I, I invited him to the show, 
And I guess 15 minutes, he called me back or he was right and texting me and then he called and said, Roland, I am on the show. Thank you so much. Uh, well, it, 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 it's, you know, we are all human beings. Some people are excited from the beginning. Some people need time to reflect and think about it. it it's, uh, everyone is welcome, you know. We, we, we are, it's not about good or bad. It's, it's just all different. And some people make decisions faster and some people need are more more skeptical and they need more answers and have more questions. It's all good. It was, uh, but I'm very, very happy that really this specific persons are, uh, are on the show because um, actually I, I met Scott, Big Scott later, but I know Ezra since uh, a while because he's living on, on what, which has been my home base for the last 14 years. I met a few years ago, uh, also on the island when he was on vacation there, Christian. I met Marcin and I do a lot of approaches with him together. So, uh, it's. I really, really was very happy. This specific, this gentleman, and the other ones who are who not are here with us today from from other countries, that they say yes to me and they trusted me and they said, oh yeah, it's a good idea. We we trust in you. We believe in you, Roland. What you're doing because they didn't know about you as a global TV and and yourself, Dr. Jacqueline. And this is a good feedback for me that I'm maybe I'm not such a bad person. <laughs> 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 you are a wonderful person. Thank you, Roland, for sharing all that. And again, for having the idea and uh, and inviting these fine gentlemen to join us. I'm going to go over to Ezra. Ezra, tell our audience where you currently are, where do you live, where are you located, and what are the things that are important to you when you think about supporting other men? And um, I'm originally from Mexico, and now I'm living in Spain, in Mallorca. I've been living here for almost 20 years, a bit over 20 years already. And um, when um, Roland invited me to, to the show, we had already spoke before how important, how we needed, men needed to get together and share and, and, uh, and, and share their feelings, share their, their thoughts, share their problems, share, because we, we noticed that there were a lot of uh, support groups that involved mainly women. So uh, uh, we were going through our own personal uh, um, situations with our partners and we talked and we met and we talked about it and uh, we realized that we needed this this type of, uh, of of communion with other men and to really open up so um, what I what I do now is I offer meditation meditation classes meditation courses I uh, coach meditation coach and also, also will start offering uh, seminars and, and retreats hopefully soon so, uh, because I believe uh, meditation is a, is a good practice for oneself to get to know oneself, to get to know one's mind and, and one's uh, uh, potentials. And this is very important nowadays because we're so lost in, we're out there all the time. We're so lost in what we have to do, how we're supposed to do, to, uh, to express ourselves, how we're supposed to, um, uh, yeah, how men are supposed to be. And sometimes we forget that we need to look inside and to know ourselves so that we can really be authentic. We can really be ourselves. Well, at as, as the same time that we're knowing, uh, we're knowing ourselves as men and as individuals and as, as uh, sentient beings. Thank you very much, Ezra. And uh, Ezra, mm -hmm. Roland mm -hmm. mentioned that you two had connected on the island of Mallorca and uh, how has that relationship that the two of you have had for so many years really supported uh, you as a man? Well, for me, it was my relationship with, with Roland at the moment was very important as a man because I found in Roland a friend, someone to share, someone to talk, someone to open up my, my heart and mind to. You know, someone who will listen to me and this is very important you know most of our most of us as men we are taught to be cold we're taught to be um to close down to be strong to be tough and uh, we also need to open up and when i was when roland and i would meet at his home or we or walk on the beach with our dogs we would talk about uh, our situations our our also our emotional uh, feelings and situations in, in terms of with our partners and how we fall through ourselves and that was a very important uh, very important moment for me um our, our relationship kind of stopped a bit because uh, of the of the um of the pandemic and uh we it was interrupted a little bit we, we still we're in contact through whatsapp and 
and uh, also Facebook. And now that uh, he has invited me to uh, participate in this, in this show, uh, of course, this is getting even closer and deeper. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. That's really inspirational to know that you two are, are really tight and support one another. All right. Thank you. We're going to go over to Christian. Christian, please let our viewers of the Global Post know where you are in the world. What is the work that you do and, and what are your feelings about men supporting men? Thank you very much. Um, well, right now I am quite close to the Alps in Germany. Um, Augsburg is the name of the city where I am right now. And um, I'm a coach and an NLP trainer. This is um, what I do for a living and um, I'm working a lot with men. So um, due to my own, um, I don't know, you call it life story maybe, I have made some experiences um, like being alone and especially being alone as a man and having nobody else to talk to, to share my problems. Um, I've been bullied at school, stuff like that. So I've seen a few shadows in my life and um, I experienced how how precious it is and how um, what what great worth it is for me to get to know other men and being able to share with them my heart and my feelings and um, even having the trust to do so. So I'm encouraging men to share, to open up their, their hearts and um, their, their thoughts to other men, um, to be able to experience the, the strength and the power of, of such a connection. Of a connection to other men if you get over the 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 habit of um of being competitive and start feeling a connection to men then you really can grow and you will be much stronger and um, emotionally more more stable than you ever can imagine so this is what i do and this is what i encourage other men and this is because of I experienced it, so I can be very authentic in doing so. And Christian, you knew Roland before. Did you know Ezra or any of the other panelists? No, unfortunately not. Um, I met Roland on Mallorca as well as um, maybe as Ezra did. Um, yeah, I met him there. And um, well, we were together now for... I don't know, it must be over five years now or something, I think. So it's nice that you were able to make some new connections with these gentlemen as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And I love our little conversations here. They're amazing. And I'm, I'm really always, every week I'm looking forward to see those guys here. And um, we're having a great time here. Thank you very much for making this happen. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna go over to Marcin and love to have you share where are you joining us from and what is unique about your backgrounds and the value that you bring to the community of men? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you for, uh, for the invitation. Actually, the biggest thanks uh, should go to Roland who brought me here and actually trusted that I will bring any value to this community. Uh, as we just briefly uh, met each other on one of my workshops, because um, I'm uh, specializing in emotions and how emotions affect our work, our life, and how through understanding our emotional side of life, we can improve its value and also our productivity, our goals, uh, professional or uh, the private ones. And Roland was hesitant to my workshop at the beginning. I pretty much remember that Roland, uh, but after that, and, and uh, also gave me some uh, good comments uh, that helped me improve my program. But after the program, we already start talking. And I think through that connection, uh, all of those um, bloomed and I'm here. I'm very grateful for that. But to be uh, perfectly honest, I am the youngest member, I think, 
uh, of the group and uh, also yes i answered uh, as the first one i think and uh, for me it's a very big challenge because i'm not so well assured of my own masculinity and uh, i have some shadows on my history as christian said beautifully so it was not very easy for me to fit in and um, to have uh, male friends uh, so uh, this group actually for me is like a pack and i feel a member of it and i do not feel ashamed or uh, excluded in any ways even though i'm the youngest and i found a great value in listening to all of those wonderful uh, beings uh, on, on all of those men uh, around me and just learning how can I improve my own life and uh, how can I be even more authentic uh, because this is my goal uh, to be as authentic as possible and also help others to uh, through authentic authenticity claim back our life our um, relationships our future so that's my goal here Thank you so much. And do you feel as the youngest member of this panel that you have observed generational differences between the way you're thinking and some of the other panelists are thinking? Uh, not yet, <laughs> I think. Uh, maybe because I'm the youngest uh, of my uh, family. So I was like a late child and my parents are... Uh, mm, the, the difference in age is uh, quite uh, large. So I was brought in like the previous era of thinking. So uh, that's why I found extremely uh, easy to connect with uh, all people that are a little bit older than me. Uh, so it's not a, I, I do not experience such a differences, but gentlemen, if you uh, see any difference uh, and I do not see it, just tell me. For, for me, it's just wonderful to listen uh, to all these guys I, I knew from, a, I say from a former life from, from some years. And I'm, I'm really so happy that we connected even deeper in, in, in this panel, in this pack. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Thank you. Ezra, you had a yeah. comment? Yeah, I think it's very valuable, very valuable that we have uh, not only different points of views as, as men, but also of the, the age differences. Uh, how men look at life, look at relationships in, in, in different times of, uh, of, of this, in the, this past century, in a sense, you know, this past uh, 20 years. Uh, it's, it's always a richness, not only because we're more people, we're five, almost two, two of our guys are missing, missing from the pack, but now, but uh, the age uh, and, and the points of view regarding the age or related to the age experience, it's very important. It's very, very, very uh, enriching. Yeah. Thank you for that as well. Uh, we're going to go over to Big Scott. We are missing two of the panelists, Hazem and Munir, uh, our two friends from Egypt. So hopefully they'll join. Big Scott, you are the only panelist so far who actually has been invited and gone over to the women's show, and you got to <laughs> experience that. What would you say are some of the main differences that you experience by being with a group of women as opposed to a group of men? And uh, tell us about your career in entertainment. Well, I think the fundamental difference between the men and the women's panel, like what you said, Dr. Jack, is uh, us men, we seem to be more open and freer. And I think one of the reasons behind that is because we've all been closed and guarded. So it's becoming a more of an apparent thing that men need to talk. And now we're like, oh, we're allowed to talk. OK, but there's no, com no, there's no ego. If you could take the ego away, like what I said on the women's program, if you women tend to attach an emotion to something and once it's an emotion if somebody says something for or against that it becomes a personal attack whereas as men we can compartmentalize things and we're a little bit thicker skinned and we can just bat things off that are totally irrelevant and not get caught up in any emotional field so we can just be out there and i'm not scared to put myself out in front of these guys and age is irrelevant because deep down we're all young men and we're all learning i think it's going to be a lot easier for the younger generation of men now because they're knowing that it is acceptable to talk it's fundamental to talk i was doing some research this week and 84 men per week in the uk commit suicide 
you know, which is, it's just not good. And I think we've got a lot of young gentlemen out there that are lost. You know, I'm an old school gentleman, so I know what values of being a man was or what I was taught was, but that's changing. Society's changing. Things are evolving. Things that we used to do commonplace as young men back then is frowned upon these days. So trying to find out what a heterosexual man is in today's confusing world, I think it's necessary that we have these talks. Um, I've been doing radio on and off now for 25 years. So I'm a communicator. I love to listen to people as much as I love to talk to people, but I like to help people through scenarios as well. And I have lots of contacts in different industries. And if I could give somebody a foot in the door with a little bit of my experience, that's what I bring to the table. I don't care. Caring and sharing. You know, there's no point in having a bank of knowledge if you don't share it with anybody, you know, so I try and do help and not just men, you know, I help anybody that's in, in a predicament. And since doing this show, um, I've had several men contact me in the background and I've had a few conversations and stuff. But to know that, you know, the next day they send you a message and say thank you just for talking, just for listening, you know, because sometimes you don't need an answer. You just need somebody to listen just to let it all come out. But as you're letting it all come out, you can start analysing it and dealing with it piece by piece rather than a, a whole picture. I think men these days were bogged down with so much of trying to pay the bills, keep the roof over your head and trying to find time to be a dad, a worker, but then time for you. You know, you need to take time aside to train yourself, do whatever, but you need you time. And that's not just men. You know, everybody needs that time away that if they don't just don't want to do anything, don't do it. But if you want to go away and do an exercise or go on a course, climb a mountain or whatever, but you need stuff to do. And you can do that solo or as a group of men. And since meeting these guys, because I've never met any of them before, um, Dr. Jacqueline invited me onto the show because I was on the show with Madeleine and they went, oh, you should have a chat to Roland about the men's show. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I'll quite happily take that opportunity. If something I say can help just one person and any of us say, and it helps one person, then we've done our job. So we're in a communication technology. So let's talk. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, I have really just enjoyed getting to know you each just a little bit more. I'm going to have you go around. Tell us, our, tell our readers, tell our audience something about you you think they'd like to know. Something they, they might not know already if they've been following something new. Let's start with Roland. Something new. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, I didn't expect this question. Well, what I can tell about myself is I'm just a normal next door guy. I'm not a superhuman being. Even when I do different stuff, maybe I do some stuff that most people don't do, but I'm just a next door guy who tries to to leave every day a little bit of comfort zone and get out and get out and try different stuff. That's what I'm doing and just become a role model for other things. And in, on, on other sides, I'm, I'm, I'm still afraid. I'm, I'm still shy. I'm, 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 it sounds a little bit weird, but I'm not a huge talker in, in, in a relationship <laughs> because I talk, I talk a lot on business. Because um, something new about myself, I don't know. I, I, I'm just like, I am who I am. I'm who I am. Thank you. I think the fact that you're not a big talker, that's new information for me, at least. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ask, ask, ask the part, my, my ex partner who was suffering. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Let's go over to Ezra. Something about you you'd like to share with our audience? Well, like uh, all men here, we're all growing. We're still growing. I'm still growing. I'm still discovering myself daily on a daily basis, sometimes more deeply. But uh, something that came up to me right now is that uh, uh, openness and tenderness is my strength. That's my, uh, my banner for these days. That's beautiful. Thank you. Christian, what do you have to say? Well, uh, I, I, um, I can connect very much to to Roland, and I didn't expect this question as well, uh, as well. So, well, um, 
one thing I learned, maybe this is new. Um, whenever I'm, I'm before, uh, before I decide something, if I stand in front of a decision, um, and I have two ways of, of, of being possible to go, um, ages ago, well, like when I was younger, let's keep it like this. That's better. Uh, when I was younger, I, um, heard a lot of, and I believed in what my mind said. I was very, um, rational and I was like, okay, what's in for me? Um, who's involved, stuff like that. So this was the way I, um, I came to my conclusions and right now, and it really uh, costed me a lot of um, courage, I think is the right word. Um, I started to decide things with my heart, which um, made my life much, much more emotional and much richer. And this is one of the things maybe we men can learn as well, um, is like decide with our hearts, not with our minds. So that's what I do. And sometimes it really scares the <clears throat> out of me, as you say. <laughs> Thanks for your transparency. Over to Marcin. Hmm. I had the privilege to think about the answer a little bit longer, but that's not going to help me, I think, <laughs> because still the question is tough. Mm, well, uh, some basics. I love cats and coffee. And I think I love cats more than coffee, which is almost impossible in my life. And um, on a little bit deeper level, what I can share is that um, uh, even though I'm on the men's show and talking as men about men's stuff, uh, up until some months even ago, I was not even uh, believing that I'm one. So even though I'm happily married for eight years almost, and I think I lead a quite a successful and satisfying life, I was not quite sure what my manhood means. And I think I'm going through some kind of a journey thanks to that show. And I'm discovering that being a man is actually not so tough. Uh, it can be most natural for me. And I do not need to constrain myself so much uh, and just, uh, you know, um, believe in my nature. So I'm exploring. I'm exploring and I'm uh, discovering new things every day. And, uh, yeah, it's not a finished job, I think. So that's what I can share. Thank you very much. Big Scott, what do you have for us? So what do I have for you? What you, what, do, what don't you know about me? Um, I've appeared in several movies and TV shows over the years. I've been a supporting artist on and off for 15, 20 years. So I've been in Stranger Things, Will. I'm soon to appear in um, His Dark Materials Series 3. So that's a little hobby that I do for fun. So started way back when it was just like i applied for a tv quiz program got on it and just had a bug so um i also play in a samba band so i'm the the pulse which was quite interesting i i have natural rhythm which we all have but um me and my daughter went to a samba workshop and then i walked in and she just looked at me and she said you're a pulse man and i was like what what's a pulse man and she just handed me the biggest drum and went one of those. And I was like, that's perfect. So I just keep the rhythm. So I like doing festivals um, just getting, that's about the most exercise I do at the moment. So uh, I've had a interesting couple of years, had a few scares and frights, but it just makes you realize that life is important. And I think what I bring to the table is I have a varied, varied experience in life. I would call myself a social chameleon so uh being a military child i've worked with the, some of the richest people in the world and some of the poorest people in the world and i'm not a wealthy person financially but what knowledge i'm quite happy to share my knowledge if it stops people making silly mistakes you know we've all got to make mistakes but when you make a mistake you also need somebody to talk to you know own up um 
be honest to yourself and to people around you. And then, as my grandma used to say, if you're honest, then you never need to remember anything you've said. If you're closed and guarded, then you're edgy. You, you don't speak because you, for the fear of being caught out, which is a man that we don't want to be caught out. We don't want to be seen to be stupid, but sometimes we are stupid, you know. Um, and something you were relating on earlier on, Marcin, he's the youngest guy in the group, but deep down, we're all young men. And I don't think that ever goes. As soon as you use, lose that young boy in you, then you become a young man. So the panel that we've got here is diverse. It's beautiful. Uh, we're all different age ranges, but I think we could sit down and do a tick list and we've probably all done a lot of the same silly mistakes back in the day, but we're now a lot more mentally aware and we're, we don't just jump into things like you do as a young man. You, you think things through. And when you think things through, they never become a big problem. They're small issues that you can deal with. So my versatile knowledge of living different lives, I think, is what I bring to this group. And it's awesome just to be chatting to men every week. You know, it's nice to, you know, we're not in each other's, we're not around a fire, but it's nice to be sat around listening to different people's perspectives and also cultural differences when we've got the guys from Egypt and stuff as well. We don't realise sometimes how easy we've got it in the Western world. So, but have we got it easy? Thank you, Big Scott. I learned a lot from what you just shared there. Uh, I want to go over to Mr. Roland Friedel to tell us about the two gentlemen from Egypt, as they're not present today. What can you share about them? Well, actually, the two guys are missing today is um, our staff, Mor Munir. He's a very deep friend of mine. I met him many, many years ago when I was working in the Middle East. And at the time, he was working for a company that I was consulting and coaching. And we started out of the business. We started a, a very good friendship and relationship. And since then, we're in contact, supporting each other and helping each other out. And I wanted to have him on a panel on the panel because, our, as a man, as a human being, with his experience and sharing, and and I, I thought we we need some, yeah, some Middle East, North African touch because they have a different experience different education they are behaving a little bit different as men to see the world a little bit different uh from a male perspective so i'm very happy that uh mormon munir is on the show too he's uh he's running his own company it's called pinnacle uh, it's a coaching consulting company in 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 many many countries all over the world but it's they started in the middle east and hasam hasam has a uh, is one of his consultants. He's a very educated person. I met him at Binnacle when I consulted them, when I helped our Muhammad starting his company. I did a lot of consulting. I brought a lot of products in and, 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 and yeah, uh, marketing stuff and whatever is needed to start a company. And then and I met Hassam there and I love, he's very quiet in the show, some, but when he says something is on point, and uh, this is the two amazing channels, success business and in in the Middle East, and especially Mohammed, he has an amazing, amazing network over there. And I'm very happy that they're on the show too. Unfortunately, not today, uh, because I guess they have a business meeting, they're not available, but they're, they have a very good contribution to the show, especially from a different cultural and also maybe a religious background. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And we also have a website where everyone can go to get more information about each of the panelists. And the website is Bonfire Talks, B O N F I R E T A L K S dot com. Roland, how can people sign up to watch the show? They go over to the YouTube channel, right? Yeah, well, the recordings they can see on the, on the YouTube channel are also the live version of, of, of the, the latest or the live version, like tomorrow. Uh, what is on every Wednesday, it's um, actually it's 9 p.m. Is it 9 p.m.? Yeah, I'm confused with time. So it's 9 p.m. Central European time, meaning uh, 3 p.m. East Coast time. Is this correct? Yeah, East. And uh, But we also have to record it things on the bonfiretalks.com website. We also have all episodes on the website. And on the website, you have all this amazing gentleman and the other guys who are not here. You will see the contact details and, and the background. So if you want to have a specific conversation, a specific uh, handsome guy from the panelists, uh, you will find them all on, on, on the website. Yeah. And there's a contact form too, of course. 
Fantastic. Well, there you have it uh, to our audience of the Global Post. You have the men of Wild at Heart Bonfire Talks, Real, Authentic, Uncut. Thank you for watching. Please do reach out to each of the gentlemen. If you have any questions or comments during the show, I'm sure they'd love to hear them and love to hear your perspectives. So that's all we have for now. Until tomorrow and every Wednesday, you can see this show, Wild at Heart Bonfire Talks, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. British Summer Time, 9 p.m. Central European Time. We'll see you all later. Thank you.